Hello students, this is Mrs. Yowd, and today I'm going to teach you Chapter 3, Lesson 1 for my Algebra 1 class. This is all about functions. Today we're going to start on page 61 of your journals. A relation tells you how inputs and outputs are related. A function is a special type of relation. And it's a type of a relation where each input has only exactly one output. The inputs are related to the x part of an xy coordinate, and the output is the y part. The domain is the set of all the inputs, or the x, and the range is the set of all the outputs, or the y. Now it's really important that you remember these two words, domain and range. We will be using them all year long. And one good way for you to remember which one is which is the D and the R. So D comes before R in the alphabet, and so it comes first. So if you are looking at your X, Y point, this is your domain and this is your range. And like I said, it comes, it, it also goes in order of the alphabet. So that's a good way to remember which one is which. The independent variable is your x variable, and the dependent variable is your y variable. So for example, in this equation, y equals negative x plus 10, the y is your dependent variable and the x is your independent variable. So the y answer depends upon what the x number is that gets plugged into the equation. On the next page, we see something about the vertical line test. So the vertical line test is when you have a graph, you can tell if it is a function because all vertical lines that go through this graph will only cross the function once. So in this case, we have a function. This is not a function. And the reason why it's not a function is because I can put this vertical line through the graph and it crosses it twice. If it crosses it twice, then that means it's not a function because remember the definition of a function is each input has only one output. And so this input of x, if I put that in, it has two different outputs and so that makes it not a function. On number one and two, it says determine whether the relation is a function and we need to explain. So remember the definition of a function is each input has only one output. So if I take a look at number one, negative two has an output of four, but over here, negative two also has an output of five. So number one is not a function. And the reason why it's not a function is because the input of negative two has two outputs, which are four and five. Let's take a look at number two. Zero as an input has three, and there are no other zeros that are in the input. Uh, one has only one output, two has only one output, and three has an only one output. Some people get confused because if you look here, a one as an output is also shared with this one over here, but that's okay. Uh, the outputs can be shared. It's the input that has to be different each time. Another way to see that is by graphing the points and using the vertical line test. You can see here that these two inputs of 1 and 2 have the same output of 1, but it still passes the vertical line test. So that means we can say, yes, it is a function because every input has exactly one output. In exercises three and four, we need to determine whether the graph represents a function again and explain, but this time we're given a graph. So what we're going to use is the vertical line test. So if I take a look at number three, I notice that these two points here, I could put a vertical line through those two points, which and it would cross through those two points, which means that this does not pass the vertical line test, and so it is not a function. 
In number four, I have this nice U shape here that has the name of a quadratic. We'll be doing a lot with quadratics later this year. So can I put a vertical line anywhere where it's going to cross that U shape more than once? And the answer is no. So it actually does pass the vertical line test. So number four is a function. In exercises five and six, we need to find the domain and the range of the function that is represented by the graph. Remember that the domain is your set of all x values and the range is the set of all the y values. So let's start with number five. We need to find the set of all of the x values. So I need to make sure that I'm paying attention to my x axis here and I'm going to look at these points. So this, where does this point look at? It looks at the zero. So zero is my first number. Now let's take a look at the next point. The next point points to the one, and we point to the two, and the three, and the four, and the five. So that means that my set of points would be zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Notice that they are individual points. They're not like number six. Number six is going to be a continuous amount. So that I'll show you how to do that on that problem. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, the range. So the range is the set of all the y numbers. So I'm going to take a look this time at my y-axis and see which numbers are being used. So if I see all three of these points point toward the four, and all three of these points point toward the three. So that means that my range is only those two numbers three and four. Okay let's take a look at number six. This time what we have is something called a continuous graph. It's not individual points like number five which mean it would be discrete. Whenever you have individual points you're going to have a set of numbers. If you have a continuous graph you need to write it with less than or greater than signs. So if I look where I start, I start at negative 3, and I know it includes negative 3 because this is a solid circle here, just like it would be on a number line. So it includes negative 3, and it goes, the highest number is positive 3, and it's everything in between. So it goes from negative 3 to positive 3, so we would want to write it this way. The domain is, it goes from negative 3 is less than or equal to the x. Now it's important that I use x here because that's what the domain uh, letter is. Less than or equal to positive 3. All right, let's take a look at our y numbers. So our y numbers, my smallest y number is 0. It's at the bottom of that v shape. And then my highest y number is shared here um, at positive 3. And it's everything in between. And so that's how that's what we would look at there and then we write it this way the range is going to be between 0 less than or equal to y this time make sure that you write a y because the range is the y numbers if you don't write the correct um, variable then I will take off some points on a tester quiz less than or equal to positive 3 all right let's take a look at number 7 the function y equals 12x represents the number y of pages of text a computer printer can print in x minutes. So first it asks us to identify the independent and the dependent variables. So if you remember, the independent variable is your x and the dependent variable is your y. So in this case, x refers to the number of minutes. So that's going to be our independent variable and the dependent variable of y refers to the number of pages. So that's going to be our dependent variable. Letter B says the domain is 1, 2, 3, and 4, so what's the range? So in this case, what we need to do is plug in 1, 2, 3, and 4 into the independent variable. So I'm going to plug in 1, so it'd be 12 multiplied by 1, so that gives me 12. And then I have 12 multiplied by 2, which is 24, and so on. So these are the answers that I got for Y, and so that is the range. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. Thanks for watching.